I'm gonna to explain to you guys where I source all my food and you're always asking all these questions. Frank, how do you get ribeye for $7 a pound from New Zealand? Frank, how do you get salmon roe or grass fed beef fat? I wanna kinda of answer all those questions. And we're gonna start with exploring local options, things that are easy to access to most people that don't require too much grunt work or spending an incredible amount of money. So you always wanna explore your local supermarkets, even like my local shop, right, sells shoulder blade lamb for four seventy a pound. Like there's some great deals in supermarkets that are even high quality foods. And outside of that, you know, your Sam's Club, your Costco, uh, even if you want to get a tax ID and make up a catering company, register with Restaurant Depot, see what food they have for sale. See what your local options are. Even farmers markets if you want to spend a little more money and possibly get some higher quality foods. And you know whether you're buying low quality or high quality, fresh versus frozen whether well, you eat a lot of fish or not, those things do vary and those are, you know, the fresh versus frozen thing, if you really do want fresh meat, you probably got to go to a local butcher. If you want the highest quality meat, that gets more expensive. There's definitely pros and cons to every aspect of it. But in regards to fish specifically, local Asian markets, even like the H Mart by me, are the best options for local fish. In regards to pricing, availability, everything they have. Uh, we can talk about the commercial fish markets later, but uh, local Asian markets, for the most part, are going to be your best bet for fish unless you have some local fish market, but I guess most people don't have that. So if you've explored all your local options, uh, you know, even maybe even butcher, if, if you haven't found what you need with those local options, then we could say, okay, let's start going to local butchers, let's go to local wholesalers, let's go to uh, pretty much any local farmers in the area and see if they could source me the food I want. Maybe the food you're buying isn't fresh enough, maybe it's not high quality enough. So by going directly to the farm, directly to the butcher, you could solve those problems. Maybe you just can't find a food that you want. Maybe you can't find grass-fed beef fat. That's where you go to that. Exploring online is also an option, but online, it's always frozen. You don't know how old it is. It tends to be more expensive. There's a lot of cons to buying stuff online. If you've, you, and if you explore all those options, that should you should have your full diet in check for a reasonable price. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is like the local halal and ethnic markets. That's what I've been doing recently. I've been going down to live kill markets and they do fresh poultry and not fresh poultry. The thing was literally alive an hour before you got it. Uh, they kill it in front of you, they cut it up and they give it to you and the pricing is usually pretty affordable. The only problem with live kill markets is the, the food quality. They're usually not definitely not pastured for the most part. Uh, the lamb can be, and just, you know, kind of the, the conditions that some of the animals are living isn't the best in the last few days of their life. So there's pros and cons to everything, but for me, I have a histamine allergy, so I have to eat this fresh food now, at least for a little while. Uh, if you're into buying large bulk amounts of food, then you can go to, you know, your local wholesalers. You can, like, I have an account with Baldor that I used to buy food from. Uh, the problem with that is... $600 a month might be a lot for you on food, but restaurants spend more than that in a day. So it's, I, like, I can't get a license with meat purveyors. Uh, I'm thinking about starting a New York City meat buying group. I'm gonna try to do, do a video on that in a week or two, and maybe we could pull our money together. If we could spend two or three grand a month, I could probably get uh, one of the New York City meat purveyors to sell. Dude, prime ribeye dry age is like $9 a pound in a New York City restaurant. So I, I'd love to have access to that, but you know, the reason I'm bringing up the wholesale thing and those like restaurant purveyors and things, it's not really practical for most people because of the price. Uh, restaurant Depot is different because you don't have to spend as much, but, um, and to get a tax ID and register a business, you don't actually have to do it, guys. You just, like, you get the tax ID, you make up a business, you can go shop at these places, but reality is, Restaurant Depot doesn't really care how much you're spending, but these food purveyors, you gotta spend a lot of money and it's not available to most people. Uh, I guess the next things uh, we could talk about like where do you get your salmon row? Uh, you have to Google buy salmon row, see where uh, these fishermen are, and you can buy it online, frozen, or you can buy the caviar. And I, you can get you know salmon row for eight dollars a pound for chum, ten dollars for sockeye, but you're not going to buy a pound of it, guys. You got to buy ten to fifteen pounds, twenty pounds to get good prices and good deals on this stuff. Otherwise, you want to buy a small amount. Um, I know Great Alaska only sells caviar now, they're not selling the skines anymore, and I know Loki Fish might, but it's, in, it's all seasonal, guys. Uh, the, the salmon roe thing is, you know, you guys, as I said, explore all your local options first, 
Then if not, reach out to butchers, reach out to farmers, go to look out for ethnic markets, then maybe you can go to wholesalers. Uh, and the main benefit of wholesalers is doing the bulk stuff. Like you can buy grain fed ribeye for five dollars a pound in bulk. The ground beef is probably less than two dollars a pound. Uh, the, some of the pork cuts are incredibly cheap. I'm sure like pork butt is like 79 cents a pound. For people that don't care about food quality, those wholesale places are great options for buying in bulk. You know, they sell eggs for 50 cents a dozen. And, and I go to the farmer's market to buy eggs for, pastured eggs for $7 a dozen. So, you know, depending on whether you buy high quality or low quality food, whether you eat fish or not, will determine what places and where you go to source your food. For me, it's easy going to see my buddy at the live kill market and buying the whole lamb, having everything nose to tail, live killed in front of me and having that. That's, to me, that's super easy. Or, you know, what I used to do recently, I would go to ShopRite to buy my lamb shoulder chopped for $4.79 a pound. I'd go to the Union Square Green Market to buy pastured eggs for $6 a dozen. I'd go to um, different Whole Foods to buy really raw honey. I'd go to uh, Loki Fish to get me some salmon roe. Now that's impractical. I'd rather do something easier, but that's what I did for a while and I did for years, you know? I was buying grass-fed ribeye from Baldor for $7.40 a pound, the Australian stuff. Uh, Go to your local, you know, when you go to your local supermarket, your local butcher, especially the butcher in the supermarket, ask them, hey, can you get me grass fed a case for this price, maybe an off cut? Ask them, see what they have. Ask them if they can get you. But you keep in mind, you got to buy a lot of it. Tell them, hey, I want to buy 40, 50 pounds of grass fed bone marrow. Can you get it? Grass fed beef fat, can you get it? And that's what you have to, ask. those are the questions you have to ask. To touch on raw milk, I'm going to link some resources in the description and I honestly don't think I could go over everything for food sourcing in one video guys uh, there's realmilk.com to find local raw milk sources and the problem is I'm allergic to raw milk and just uh, not milk but raw but dairy in general I'm allergic to and I can't tolerate it raw dairy also tends to be expensive like a pint of butter can be like 13 bucks a gallon of milk is like at least ten dollars goat milk gets crazy expensive so from that perspective and it's inflammatory perspective, but raw dairy is definitely delicious and a great source of nutrition. I'll link that in the comments. Eatwild.com is a great resource to find local farms. I'll link that. But overall guys, uh, this is what you're pretty much gonna do. You're gonna go to every local supermarket and Costco and see what they have. If one of them has something you like, maybe speak to the butcher there and see if they can get you more of it in a larger amount for a cheaper price. And if not, uh, then if they don't have food you want, ask them if they can get it. If not, then you can explore farmers, uh, butchers, halal ethnic markets. And honestly, halal and ethnic markets might be your first stop. Actually, this should be your first stop uh, for the quality and the price. Uh, the wholesale thing to me isn't really worth it. Doesn't pan out too well unless you're spending $5,000 a month on food with your buddies. And overall, as I said earlier, guys, whether you buy high or low quality food, whether you eat a lot of fish, that will depend on where you're going to buy your food, what you're buying, how much of it you need. If you're like me and you have a histamine intolerance and you only need to buy fresh, then, hey, maybe the halal market is your only option. If you're just looking for the most nutrient-dense foods possible and, you know, histamine isn't an issue, then maybe you want to source from all those places like I used to. If you only want to eat a particular food and get it for the best price, then you might have to go through a few different places. Uh, but if you have any other questions in relation to this, I don't think I missed anything, guys. Uh, I could go over pricing more. I could go more into depth on things I've tried in the past, my relationships with food purveyors, how they've lied to me, all those things. But that's not the main purpose of this video. Like Telling people that they lied to me and the beef belly was a year old and frozen isn't going to help anyone out. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to support me, uh, you know, just share the video. Uh, if you'd like to check out my social media, it's in the description. If you'd like to check out other ways to support me, that's also in the description. I should be on the Carnivore Cast this week, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, in regards to videos that are going to be speculative for the next week or so, we're going to do maybe a critique video on Dr. Greger. We might debate vegan gains this week. Uh, we're going to be doing... Uh, let me know what other videos you guys want to see in relation to the content of this channel. I do have a huge list of videos that need to be done, and there are a few that are kind of at, at the top priority at this moment. but. 